So the next one is dynamic casting. Let us understand what is dynamic casting. Then we will see an example program how we can perform a dynamic casting in C++. Dynamic casting is a runtime cast operator used to perform the conversion of one type into another only on a class pointers and references. This is the point that I want you to underline. The first point is this one is a runtime class, a runtime cast operator. Static is a compile time cast operator. That's the first difference. So the difference between the static and dynamic is that one is a compile time. This one is a runtime cast operator. The second one is this dynamic cast operator can be performed only on a class pointers and references. It means it checks the valid casting of the variables at a runtime and if the casting is fails then it will return the now value. So the syntax is this dynamic cast data type and expression. Make note of this point it can be done only on a class pointers and references. So for that we need to create a class. So the syntax is this everything else will be same. So this time I'm just going to delete this part let me say I'm going to create a class so if you have to create a class you are going to use the keyword as class followed by class name so the class name can be anything so let's say uh, class is an blueprint of an object right so let's consider student as a object maybe the class name can also be a student right so let's say here we are going to learn about the dynamic casting. Dynamic casting can be performed only on a class pointers and references. So for that, we are going to make use of the C++ inheritance concept. What is inheritance? Yeah, we are going to have the parent class and then the child class. So let me call this one as a parent class or a base class or a super class. They're just the same. So I'm going to call this one as a base class. So inside, I can have data members and member function isn't it so so for this example since we are just going to learn about how to perform the casting i mean how to perform the type conversion from one data type into another data type uh, not necessarily i wanted to have the data members and member function for this case i just wanted to leave it blank right so this is a base class or i would say this is a parent class now i'm going to create a child class so for that i'm going to use a class as a keyword since i have used the term as base so here let me use the term derived so that is a base class this is a derived class so this class is going to derive the data members and the member functions of the parent class so in this case the parent class is the base class right so now i need to connect so how am i going to let my compiler to know that this derived class is derived from the base class for that c++ uses this syntax i'm going to put the colon to say this is a child class this is a parent class so here i need to specify the access specifier there are different types of access specifier public private protected i'm sure that we have discussed about that one in the first class so now i'm going to use the access specifier name as public here so when you use a different access specifier here the accessibility to that parent class would differ so for now we are not going into detail about access specifier for now just know that we are going to use the public as an access specifier meaning i will have an access to the parent class now i'm going to specify the parent class parent class in this case is a base class so simply this one is a syntax for us to specify the inheritance so this is a parent class sorry this is a parent class and this is a child class so this colon here is used to specify that this class can have access to the parent class. Now inside, even for this class, I'm not going to have any class definitions. Okay. Now I have two classes. One is a parent class. Another one is a child class. But both of these classes have no class definitions. So now I need to create a main function. So within this main function, Let's say here I'm using the class. So C++ is also a object oriented programming. When we talk about object oriented programming, everything is about classes and objects. So now I have the class. Now in order to access the member function and the data members of this class and this class, I need to create an object for the class. So in C++, 
for you to create an object first you need to specify the name of the class in this case i have two classes isn't it so the first class name is base and the second class name is derived so for me to create an object for the first class so i'm going to specify the name of the class followed by the object name object name is it can be anything the same way that you create a variable so you just have to follow the rules that you follow to create a variable so let's say since this is a base so i'm just going to say b what is object object is an instance of a class variable or a creating a variable for the class is called an object now i have created an object for the class b now again i wanted to create an object for the class derived so same way i'm going to get the derived class and then i wanted to create an object are we together so what is the use of this object without this object you will have no access to the data members and the member functions of the class for example let's say in this case i have the base class right let's say inside i'm going to have the member function we call them as a member function because that function is going to be the member of the class in c programming we simply call function so let's say the member function is void display inside i'm just going to have c out hello okay so this function void display is the member of the class base because of that we are going to call this void display as a member function of a class base in case if you want to print that message saying hello into your console window this method is a member of a class base so for that i'm going to create an object using this object i'm going to call this function without the object you will have no access to this method that you have them here in case if you wanted to print this message you are going to pick the object what is the object that i have created here b i'm going to use the dot operator and then i'm just going to call the function pick the object put the dot operator specify the name of the function when you run this one here i didn't put the access specifier remember in the first class i said that if you don't specify the access specifier by default it will be private isn't it so if it is private no one will have an access that's the reason why it's complaining that no you know what this one is a private so if you wanted to access i'm not going to give you an access so i'm just going to use access specifier name as public so that i will have an access so let me save this one when i run this one you would see the result saying hello so this is basically how you can have an access to the class members and the member functions you have to create an object put dot operator then call that function right so now our intention is not to create anything our intention is to learn how to typecast using dynamic casting so let me remove this part at this point in time there is nothing inside in the base class there is nothing inside in the derived class the only thing that i have done i have created an object for these two classes that i have there are we together so the next step i'm going to create a pointer variable for these two classes for base class i'm going to create a pointer variable pointer variable in the sense remember in the definitions we have learned dynamic casting can be done only on a class pointers and references for that reason i'm going to create a pointer variable for this class base so if you wanted to create a pointer variable you have to use the asterisk right and then since it's the base class pointer let me say base class pointer variable so this one can be anything i just wanted to be descriptive so b stands for base class pointer equals now i am going to use the syntax for this dynamic casting so the dynamic casting syntax is this let me copy this and then i'm going to paste them here so here the new data type i'm going to use the class pointer so in this case this is a base class right this is a base class isn't it so so here i'm going to use 
base class pointer class name is base because it can be done only on a class pointers that's the reason why there is a pointer there are we together dynamic casting can be done only on a class pointers and references so let's say this is a class pointer when we talk about the reference what do we use we use the ampersand symbol isn't it so that specify the reference so i'm going to use this ampersand symbol because this specifies the reference or the address and then here i'm going to pass the object of my derived class what is the object of my derived class here d so what am i trying to do a dynamic casting can be done only on a class pointers and references so for this case references i have took the object of the derived class and this derived class object i'm trying to convert them into a base class pointer isn't it so that is what it means same like in the previous example static cast in the angle bracket we specify the data type let's say if you wanted to convert the double into integer here you will put integer but in dynamic casting we can allow to convert either a class pointer or a reference type so let's say in this case i'm trying to convert the derived class object reference into a base class pointer and then that one i'm going to store them into my base class pointer variable is it making sense so this is a syntax so this dynamic cast can be used only on a class pointer and references that's the only thing that we can do so i'm going to take this derived class object as a reference i so remember this one is an expression in the previous example we have an expression where there is a variable name do you remember variable name in the angle bracket the data type that you want to convert and then we store them in a certain variable to print that result isn't it so so here we are not going to use the variable as an expression because here we can use only class pointers and references references will come with the ampersand symbol so this ampersand symbol is the reference i'm trying to say i'm trying to refer the derived class object i'm trying to convert this derived class object reference into a base class pointer and then this result will be stored into the pointer variable bppta in the next step i'm going to create the same for the derived class so derived is the class name i'm going to create a pointer variable for this one so this is derived class maybe derived class pointer variable equals i'm just going to copy the same but in this case the type casting will be done on a derived class pointer using the base class object we are trying to perform two different type of dynamic casting on two different things we are trying to perform the dynamic casting on two different things in the first line we are trying to convert the derived class object into a base class pointer in the second example we are trying to convert the base class object into a derived class pointer that is exactly what you have done so when i save this one let me go there and run let's see what will happen i'm getting an error the error here is this cannot dynamic cast this ampersand b of type class derived so it's simply complaining you know what you are allowed to convert the derived class object into a base class pointer but you are not allowed to type cast from a base class object into a derived class pointer that's an error are we together so to and then the reason is here again the reason was because the source type is not polymorphic they were even giving us a reason why we are getting this error he says that this one can be done in case if you have the class with a polymorphic functionality what is polymorphism many forms in different classes the same function can react or perform different things that is polymorphism isn't it so so now to get rid of this error now i want to convert this base class object into a derived class is giving me an error because it is complaining 
there is no polymorphism here. So if I include the polymorphism concept into my base class, this error would go. So for that, though we have not learned about the polymorphism, I'm sure that you are going to learn about polymorphism in detail. Just try to understand, for you to use the polymorphism, I have to use a virtual function. So for that, I'm going to use the keyword name called virtual. Do not get confused with this term virtual because we are going, as I said, that we are going to learn about what is this keyword virtual, what is it used for, how to use them in detail when we get into the last part of this course. For now, just understand which one is the keyword that we use to specify the polymorphism behavior of a C++. So void, let's say, I'm just going to say. So initially it's complaint. No, because in this base class, there is no polymorphism. That's the reason why you're getting this error. So now when I save and run, there will be no error. But again in the result, there is nothing. It's not printing anything because inside the class, there is nothing. Isn't it so? Inside the class, there is nothing. So now, now we are not getting any result. Now let me just modify this program. So let me remove these two part because we wanted to check whether we can perform the dynamic cast from the derived class object into a base class pointer, a base class object into a derived class pointer. So for that, what I want to do is, so let me just say base class pointer and then here, I'm just going to remove this part. I'm going to use the new as a keyword. What is new keyword by the way? What is it used for? The role of this new keyword is to allocate the memory for this pointer variable that we have then. So new, I'm going to use this derived. And then the next class, the next step derived. And then I'm going to have this pointer dynamic cast and then derived. Let's say I just wanted to pass, I'm not going to pass the reference, instead I'm just going to pass this part here, the pointer variable. To check whether we can perform the dynamic casting or not, let me just use a simple if statement. So down there, I'm going to put if, just to verify whether the dynamic casting has been done successfully or not. So in the if condition, I'm going to check, let's say, how are you going to check? From this step, here we are going to take this value and then we are going to type cast into a derived class pointer and the value will be stored where? Into this variable, isn't it so? Into this variable. So here I'm going to check if this tptr is not equals to now, what does that mean? What am I trying to check? In case if the typecasting is successful, this one is not going to be now, isn't it so? If the typecasting is successful, this one is not going to be now because it's going to have a value because the typecasting was successful. So here inside, I'm just going to say C out, let's say success or else C out. Is it making sense? So when I save this one, so the expected results should be success if the typecasting is done. I'm sure that when I click this one, as you can see them there, the result is success. So we have successfully managed to convert this base class pointer variable into a derived class pointer. Are we together? This is about dynamic casting.